This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Mustang Cat, the official Caterpillar dealership of Southeast Texas. They've been a leader in construction equipment and power systems for more than 60 years and have supported projects that have helped shape Houston, including the Astrodome and Beltway 8. Mustang Cat, let's work together. <laughs> okay, are we, uh, am I ready to go? Okay, cool. Uh, welcome to the... Really start with a hard coughing in the mic. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Welcome to episode two of the Five Plus Eight Show. Um, we are going to have a our first ever guest in, in studio today. Uh, his name is Thomas Watts. He is the partner, founder, the partner, the partner, the founding He's member. The, Just yeah. put the in front of everything, and I think we're good. Of uh, of L, is it, do you guys L or L Creative? We do L. Is yeah. kind of how internally we. I thought reference so. it, but L Creative is, I guess. So uh, L Creative dot com. Uh, L is a uh, a a super badass uh, agency here in town that does uh, amazing websites, wonderful motion work, uh, advertising, branding. Um, a little bit different than us, but not that different. And we worked, we all we worked with uh, Thomas years ago. Uh, big fan of all his work, and we wanted to bring him on because today we we're going to talk about pay. Uh, and basically what, what to pay and why to pay and who to pay mm. Mm. or lack of pay. Yeah. Or lack of or pay. Who, yeah. Yeah. So welcome, Thomas. Thank you very much for that intro. Um, not from Jeff though. I heard he didn't say a word. He, Je- <laughs> Je- you know, what I realized actually it's really, it's, it's contentious Jeff already. Is the, Je- Jeff is the perfect uh, person to have on your, on your podcast with you because he just like, he just laughs. He's the Ed McMahon. Yeah. He just kind of <laughs> like... <laughs> That's right. Yeah, he's like a good who, idea. Who is like a Andy on um, <laughs> Andy, Andy Richter? Richter. Yeah, yeah he's Andy, Andy Richter. Richter. Oh man, it's awesome. Right because, on. Yeah, because he'll laugh when there's just like an awkward silence or I mispronounce something. <laughs> fill, fill the space. That's, yeah, yeah, it's wonderful. But I th- I, yeah, you do it expertly though. So, uh, how big? Uh, how big is your agency in terms of people? Uh, I was telling Jeff, like on any given day, we're. Uh, be bopping around thirty people. So is it really? Yeah. Oh so uh, I would say that. Uh, and that, that pulls in some ancillary freelance that work on a, a regular basis with us. But yeah, about 30. Uh, and how long have you guys been around? 10 years. So we celebrated our 10-year anniversary last year. Uh, we started in 2009 and uh, went to 2019. And every day is a, uh, a mind melter of uh, anxiety and mm-hmm. worry. Mm-hmm. And uh, somehow, despite our best efforts, we've survived for 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a fair way to to describe the the day-to-day feeling of so we we really are thankful for the contracts that we have <laughs> with our clients okay, I'm just y'all, y'all, y'all con- use contracts oh, uh, uh, that's all it okay. is you don't know work it's all contracts you don't, you, <laughs> there's no relationship for trust it's just it's once just the contract. contract signed i think that the <laughs> they agreement's have to, done. they have to pay you yeah, they and have so to it legally. Really matter what you do and i know that you'd made a comment on the last show that Generally, you would expect that your clients would have more attorneys than you. Yes. We actually have all attorneys. <laughs> so it's, a, it's an agency <laughs> full of attorneys. We don't even have an art director. It, we have 10 attorneys. Attorneys and contracts. You sign them, you okay. sign them up, and then you're just like, okay, you're signed up, and now you're locked in for life. Locked in. <laughs> so 50% up front. You know, as it's, a given. Yeah, it's a it's a different model. It it is. <laughs> it, it's worked though, for 10 years. Um, so, <laughs> go ahead. We're getting we're getting the pause. We're getting the pause from our engineer. Yeah. No thumbs no, up. No, we're not getting. He just okay. That was a thumb, right? Yeah, okay. okay. Um. So I, I'd like to uh start out with something Thomas brought up to us. Obviously, if you if you follow us in any way, you know that we talk a lot about culture and people and how important all that is. I think it's. I think in. I think in today's, you know, environment, uh. uh the, the employees have so much more power now than they ever did before because they back even 10, 15 years ago, you really didn't, <clears throat> you really didn't know about other agencies. There wasn't glass door. There weren't all these ways to very quickly find out what it was like if, if the grass was really greener on the other side. And I think it's so much easier today for employees to figure that out. And because of that, they're demanding more from their current companies in terms of, of culture fit and environment and not things outside of just compensation. Yeah, uh, they're entitled. They're entitled. Entitled yeah, millennials. Yeah, they're entitled. Yeah, the, the, the famous kidding. entitled millennial statement. But but you 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 guys have a, a, a system that you were telling us about uh, to kind of help, help gauge uh, value 
and and in the relationship you have with your with your team? Yeah, I, I think that when you get into the relationship with the either prospect employee or the employee, <clears throat> there's three things that the employee is relatively looking for in, in, in the acceptance of the job is they're looking for the three C's, which is compensation, culture, and career. Compensation, are you paying me? Are you going to pay me what I, I deemed I should be paid? Uh, culture is what you've set up. Is that an existence that's fun for me every day? Is it something that's encouraging? Is it something that's beneficial? Uh, is it just a, a welcoming, joyful environment? And joyful is my term. Uh, everybody has their own kind of criteria of what culture would be. And then the final is career. Is this is this benefiting my resume? Is this pushing me to the next step? Am I going? So, am, are we going somewhere? Am I going somewhere? And also on the career thing, is this what I want to be doing? So that's day one, uh, and those are three demands that every every employer knows that they have to acknowledge, and that's something that they have to be you know put on the hook for. On the employer side, what we're looking for are hands, heart, and uh, um, head. And I'm not, I'm <laughs> Come sorry. On. Come on. Yeah. So I'm going to say, I'm going <laughs> to it's not that kind of show. Uh, uh, so, but what we're looking for is when we talk about the head, are, are you giving us uh, insight? Are you giving us uh, critical forward, uh, proactive thinking? Are you entrepreneurial in the way that you think? Uh, and then second is uh, your heart. Do you have passion? Do you have energy? Can you really uh, ingrain yourself into this organization wholeheartedly and believe, believe in what we're doing not from some kind of lofty idealistic goal, but just as as we move through our industry, are we uh, something that you can put your your heart behind, your passion behind? And then last is uh, your hands. Are you good at what you do? Mm -hmm. If you came in as a 3D artist, are you good at 3D? Or if you're a copywriter, are you good at writing copy? So those are the three things we're looking for, but we can only really request one of them, and that's the hands. So when we sit down and we talk to you in an interview and we say, you know, you say you're a good uh, 3D artist, let's say, and you show us your portfolio or your, you know, your work and your resume. And we deem, yes, you, you look like you can do the work. You have that agreement that we're going to compensate you for this execution, that you, this functional role is going to be paid this amount of money. But you don't know if they have the energy and the heart and the passion behind what they do professionally and for your organization because you can't know that day one. And mm -hmm. most employees will lie to you. And say, oh, yeah. absolutely, I'm a very passionate person. And you sit there and go, well, that's to be seen. And then the top part is, are you allowing us to get into your brain of how you think entrepreneurially? Can you think as a business owner? Can you think on behalf of the agency? And will you? And will you? Yeah. Because could, you could lock that part of yourself and, off. And you could use that to yourself for freelance and side gigs and not give any of it away. One million percent. Yeah, yeah. So then what happens is you become a functional seat filler. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you start looking at value, really day one, you do kind of have the offer letter, the contract, mm -hmm. hate to say it, but you do have the contract of, hey, we're going to bring you in and you're going to do this. And that's all we know about each other. Right. But when you move down the road six months, a year later, you have to reevaluate is from the owner's side, are they meeting the three H's? And to date, you know, most owners just say, well, no, they're functionally fulfilling the role that they said they would. And so that's all we're going to put them on the hook for. But I think it's I think it's critical for business owners to go. But no, we want we want your head, and we do want your heart. We want those things. Let us into your thinking because we may not be doing something that we could be doing better. But if you're withholding information, right. you're not helping us, and we're not helping you. And if your passion, if your passion isn't there, then you're not working joyously. And everybody knows when you work joyously, you work way better. Yes. When you're happy and you you want to be somewhere you're killing it on the work side. Yes. Your quality of your work, the experience of working with you is yeah. so yeah, much every, better. Everything is better. So you have the three H's and you have the three C's. And to date, business owners respect the three C's because we, we have to, right? That's our commitment. But well, I think that I mean, we need to hold... Not all the, do. No, not all do. That's I correct. Mean, a, lot, right. a lot don't. Yes, and and that's to their yeah. own detriment. Absolutely. And so, and and that all comes out in the wash over time. Yeah. And, and we can talk about that because... <clears throat> making you know short-sighted uh, decisions, it's it's going to come back and get you. Right. Um, but I think that it's okay for, to say that business owners can hold the employee to the three H's, and that you know with time and encouragement that you do allow them to 
you know, forward to think on behalf of your agency. So you're getting the brain. You do allow them to show the passion and encourage their passion for what they do. And maybe sometimes that pushes you into a challenged area as a business owner, but that's a good thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Challenge the junk out of me, but the, and then, and then you have the functional. So I think that what we do is we try to align um, this, you know, I always get called the hippie of the agency because I, I do think in these kind of humanistic terms, Yes, it's not all about how much money are we making and how, you know, how good is the quality of the creative? It's, did we have fun doing it? Did right. the clients have fun working with us? Um, because I know when you add that, the happiness and joy level in there, everything rises to the top. But anyway, as a business owner, you do, it is okay to to demand or command the three H's because if we're meeting the three C's, we, we need the three H's. And when those align, that's your core team. And that's who you are as an agency. And those are the people that you need to protect the people that represent the three H's. I talked a lot right there. So sorry. No, 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 no. That, that was yeah. the setup though. We needed that. Je and Jeff didn't laugh once. It wasn't funny. Well, I was trying, I was trying, <laughs> I was trying to figure out how you accomplished all this with nothing but attorneys and contracts <laughs> in the office. <laughs> No, I, so I think that's I think that is probably the best the best I've ever heard it put as far as what what does the company owe to the employee and what is it then if the company if the company checks these three boxes fills those things yeah then what then, can they expect back from the employee because what I hear is from 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 whatever I listen to I hear this phrase a lot from from small business owners why doesn't why don't I, why can't I get my people when they complain about people? Like I I'm really against the whole entitled millennial thing because I think it's BS. I think that young people are just young people. They were young people 50 years ago. They're young people, you know, now. And, and with that, now millennials is this great like branding term, but, but, but in reality, they're just young people and they just like, just like old people, they only care about themselves and they're only trying to get what they want. Yeah. Um, and it just annoys older people because they're like, you, you don't deserve it yet. And they're right. They don't deserve it yet. But owners or, or small business owners, managers, whatever, will say, how do I get my employees to care about the business as much as I do? And I think, well, of course they don't care about it as much as you do because you've worked there or you've owned it. So it, you're, you're making a lot more money. You have a lot more skin in the game. Why would somebody who's worked there for six months, who's 24 yep. care as much about it as you, who is your family business that you've owned for 30 years? Like no crap. They don't care about it as much as you do. Yeah. And I, I, I think that you have to figure out the way to incent them. Yes. To, yes. To reveal their brains, reveal their hearts, encourage their passion. And so when you incentivize, you do it through a couple different ways, obviously financially. Okay. Yes. Okay. So th this is kind of a, the true nature of man is selfishness. Yes. And I, it's a horrible thing to say, but it's, it goes into the animal world that we all get into a protectionist attitude. What is, what is going to cause me harm? What's going to make, yeah, you, know, you got it. You got better. You literally have to take care of yourself. And that's the psychology we have with clients. And that's how we tell our clients to address their audiences and all that <clears throat> crap. Anyway. Not crap. Sorry. And you can, uh, you can say crap. No, you can say no. anything you want. I wanted to say something much worse. Than anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is that you want to incentivize the employees, first of all, financially. You want to make sure that they're taken care of. And that's where you sit there and you have to say, are you a core member or are you a functional seat filler, right? Because if you're a functional seat filler, you're not serving the agency and the agency isn't serving you. Yeah. We're just the next stop on your the next line of your mm -hmm. resume. And we that doesn't do any of us any good. Um, because you're not learning, you're not growing and you're not leading. And those are the things that eventually, if you did go somewhere else that they would want you to, to, you know, have on your resume. And for the agency, you're not helping us grow because there's no passion and you're not letting us into the brain. So anyway, when you identify <clears throat> the core value, the core team, you sit there, no matter what their title is, no matter where their placement in the agency is, if they fulfill those three H's on the, the, your side on the owner side mm -hmm. and they're fulfilling their three or the, you're fulfilling the three C's on the employee side, then you've got to financially reward them and incent them to stick around, yeah. be better, try harder. You've got to emotionally incent 100%. them, let them know how valuable they are at every turn. And don't we say that in relationships? I wish I would have said this to this person, I mean, but I never did. That To me, that's the, that's the crazy thing is that, that I've worked at places before and if they literally it just had said a couple more times, Adam, you're doing a really good job. That would have meant the world to you. Yeah. It would have meant the world Because I was to you. invested. I wanted someone to walk up and say, 
hey man, like I, I love the way you were in that meeting. Like you were clearly engaged. Like that means so much to me. So just a nice shoulder rub would have told you everything that you needed. To <laughs> I'm easy. I'm easy. I'm, I'm, I'm words of affirmation. It's the easiest love language. It's yeah. just, it's just words. My wife won't give them to me. No. And that's what we crave at every yeah, point. Please yes. just tell me please, that I'm please. a good father. <laughs> so, so, so remember going back to the you, you'd mentioned a movie in the last episode. So I know movies are fair game here. So at the end of saving private Ryan, he turns to his wife and he says, tell me I've, I've been a good man. Tell me oh, I've lived a good yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. Is what we, our existence on earth is finite and we do need those words of affirmation yeah. that we have done a good job, that we are doing a good job, that we are worthwhile and that we are valuable in the scope of an agency. And so that's my hippy dippy side is that any business strategist is going to come in and say, you know, functional seat fillers, you know, they need, they're, they tact, tactically, you know, accomplish a lot, but you know, you have to balance things and some of them need to be let go. But then I sit there and go, are we tapping into the true value of that person? Have right. we encouraged them to right. let us into their mind, into their passion and all of these things? And that's where I sit there and go, that's where the true value of an, an employee is. And right. you have to let them know at every turn. And <clears throat> business owners feel like you're being, uh, in, we work on insecurities, right? That we feel like we're revealing too much about ourselves. I, yeah, I think, yeah. That's total bullshit. Yeah, uh, yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, yeah. And so <laughs> the thing is, be vulnerable to your employees. 100%. Let them know you are truly a part of who we are as a business mm -hmm. and you are so valued up here but then critically think if somebody's not that that if you can't say that to somebody next to them as a business owner think about how can we help you get to a place where you could be that yeah and whether that's inside this agency or somewhere else if you need to move on um yeah i mean we're 100 percent aligned in that i think uh, one thing you said uh earlier when we were talking i think is 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 really important and and needs to be done uh in more places and needs to people need to allow themselves to do is uh not pay based on title and uh managerial uh absolutely level. not e absolutely e not almost even the experience level to a certain degree yeah yeah, yeah no, it's value you know, right it's yeah. so we we bring in we have people who are senior and, and have all this awesome experience. And then we bring in very young people who are very green. Their value is up to the individual and not to their resume. Mm -hmm. And so you, again, you go back to that day one where you're talking to them and everybody's kind of lying to each other about this is what I can do. And this is how much money I want to make. And right, you, make, right, you right. come to that just initial agreement. But over the course of time, people's value starts bubbling up. And as business owners, we go, holy crap, this value is bubbling up in an area that we haven't even considered. Yeah. So outside of, you know, we had a guy mm. ask us one time, uh, say, what if I don't want to be a manager? Am I still of, of value to the company? One million percent. Yeah. Oh, because if you are offering us your mind and your heart and your hands at all points, you don't have to be a manager. You could be the janitor and you could still be killing it up here. Yeah. Because yeah. if, and then you look across you know, with not short sightedness across the value of what they're doing for the agency. It's not all managers and directors and, and, and partners. It's anybody anywhere in the chain can be offering in a tremendous value and they need to be compensated uh, financially. They need to be incentivized emotionally and rewarded emotionally with that. You're doing a great job. You are valuable to who we are. And are you going to cry? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was get, I thought I was getting to your heart. No, right no, no. You were. I wasn't even thinking about you. Yeah. I was. I was somewhere else. But, uh, Are you still talking? <laughs> he wasn't even listening. <laughs> but anyway, that 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 truly is, and that's just who we are as humans. Is that we need to, and I hate to say this. We had one guy say, you know, years ago. I don't know why y'all reference it as a family, and it's like Dick. Yes. <laughs> well, no, his, if his, someone said that to me, his I, name, his name I was throwing him out the window. His name wasn't Dick. So, <laughs> it was, I mean, but uh, oh. sorry, Dick. Uh, no, but anyway, he's no longer there, I assume. No. And the thing is, is that and, and you're really getting into the brass tacks. No. But, um, <laughs> the thing is, is that it is a family. And if, and if you, even if it's not for you to not. Yeah, it's to obviously not an actual family. But if you don't aspire to work in a familial sense yes. with others, yeah. we spend so much time, more time every day. More time than with our actual family. So wouldn't you want to walk into an organization joyously each morning to work joyously and to be with people that you love and care for? And it's like. Watching the last episode, I see you guys, and I realize I have so much care for you guys. Yeah. And at one point, we were just coworkers. Well, and 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 that yeah. was and that was the first place I ever worked with you guys that I felt that way. Yeah. And I remember, I remember after the interview, 
talking to my friends, my family and saying, I, I want this job so bad because I want to be, I, I wanted in on with this crew. I yeah. wanted to be with you guys yeah. and I wanted to, to collaborate with you guys. And then as, as over the years, we all kind of went in different on our different paths. That was the only time. And it was a short period of time. That I felt that. Yeah. And, and, and I, so I, I kept searching for that and searching for that. And, and that's, that's big reason why we started five plus eight was because mm. I couldn't find it and I was tired of looking for it. So it's like, Hey Jeff, let's just, let's just make our own. Yep. And, and you, you too, probably. And that's, that's exactly right. You take all of your experience. So by the time we had started our agency, I was, um, goodness gracious, probably 15 years into my career. Mm -hmm. And I took all of the, the bad things that I saw over mm -hmm. the course of time. And yep. I said, we will never do these things. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not just an inherent thing that just automatically happens. You have to fight those things every day. Yeah. Because it's like a tide. It wants to keep pushing you up on that beach and you have to resist it. And that's where other agencies and other organizations end up that way is because they don't fight hard enough against it. Yeah. And so as we talk to you about, you know, or as I'm saying, you know, we, you have to re re encourage your, your, your core with, you know, Hey, you're valuable. We, we do a crappy job of that mm -hmm. and we have to constantly fight against that and remind ourselves, remind yourself to tell your, your loved one that you, they're doing a good job. Right. Because they need that affirmation. Yeah. They need that. And they need to be compensated and all those <clears throat> things. Here's a question for you. Where do babies come from? Yeah. <laughs> What it, 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 does it, so th this philosophy you're talking about mm. sounds great. Mm. Does it get harder to do the more people you add? Was it easier at 10 people and now more difficult at 30 people? Would yeah. it be even more difficult at 60 people? It was more natural. It doesn't get harder in your belief in it. It gets harder in the function of actually doing execute it. execute it, right? Yeah, because when you're at 10 people, you're still kind of that startup energy. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how long, but you're kind of this this gang of we're all in this together because it's 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 fight or flight. Mm -hmm. And everybody has to be kind of circled the wagons yeah. and, and go. And so, but then when you hit a, a numerical threshold with uh, how many people are in your organization, you kind of start losing that energy just inherently. Mm -hmm. And so you've, you've got to remind yourself functionally to do those things. So yeah, I would say it gets harder the more people you have, but also I think that's um, who you are as a human being. You know, like there's a lot of business owners that do just make me the money. I'm going to go hang yeah. out by the pool for the rest of the day yeah. and show me the numbers. Yeah. And that's not who we are. And uh, as an owner, even though you could probably go do that, don't do that. Yeah. Stay ingrained. Stay worth you know worthwhile to your employees. Well, I think the uh, one thing you brought up that you don't hear much about, which is a super valuable um, piece of knowledge, is it when you got the core right. You talk about the core yep. of people, and 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 everywhere I've worked, they had a core. Even when they were you know a hundred people, mm -hmm. you still knew who the five or six sure. that were never going anywhere. The game and, and changers. A sure. lot of it were that, you know because the compensation gets so well so so high, and and, and some of it's because they you know they they've they've been there so long, they literally don't know where else to go. So that's not always a positive if you're part of the core. Yeah. But so our team, you know, we have our core. <laughs> One name just popped up. <laughs> Sorry. You, you, well, no, I mean, seriously, some people just get stuck. They're like, oh, sh I've been so here. It's like an, it's a Pirates of the Caribbean where they're all stuck against the wall yeah. inside the ship. Oh, yeah. Oh, with barnacles all over yeah, them. It's like, that's it's that. and we've all we've all been places and seen that. You know, yeah, right. it's yeah. like oh, they're part of the wall. Yeah. Right, yeah, he will be just, torn down with like, the building. Just like, <laughs> well, I guess he's, yeah, he's he's now like one of those beams that's like uh, part of the foundation. So yeah. if you take it down, like <laughs> right. the whole thing's gonna fall. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I guess that's not a bad metaphor. But those, so those core people, I guess what you have to do is you have to turn them, which they should be, uh, into into. Um, uh, what's the word when you kind of need them to, to, to like disciples almost, you know, I don't want to say evangelists yeah, yeah. for the brand or for mm -hmm. the company. Yep. So like, you know, for us, it's, it's, it's this people in this room, this group, right? Yeah. Here. Yeah. This mm -hmm. group. And, and, mm -hmm. and they need to, the, <laughs> and they need to, as the company grows, be as convicted and, and, and energetic, if not more so than you to say, when they have their team underneath them, yep. they're like, listen, this is how we do things. Yep. And we legitimately care about you. And we're going to help you grow no matter what. Yep. And if you find out one of your core people is not doing that, yep. what do you do? And so if you're, you're if mean, one of your core people is not, is, 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 is now in charge of, 
a, a, a new group because you can only manage what you know six seven people at a time mm -hmm. so now you you know your your director of whatever mm -hmm. is you find out or you hear through the grapevine they're not they're not espousing the same beliefs yeah. uh that you built your company on mm -hmm. and and this whole group of your organization is now being um is, is being alienated is not is not feeling the the culture i mean that's a serious offense. Well, and that is a serious offense, but you have to go look at who's the, the worst offender of that. Okay. So as an owner, if you have a, let's say a director that's working with a business, you know, a, 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 a chain of command within your organization and they're lead, leading them astray. Yeah. Uh, you first as a business owner go, why, aren't, how did I not see this? Yeah. How did I know, not know this was happening? Yeah. And so then you have to sit there and look at your behaviors going, well, I'm either out of touch. I'm not connecting on a regular basis with that person. I'm not going around the director to make sure that I connect with the, the, the those that are under them Yeah, to be open and hearing. So that's the, that's the kind of thing where the, a little bit of the BS of structure gets muddled up yeah and the only person to blame in that situation is the business owner yeah because if you're so out yeah, of touch fair. with your organization that's that something is going astray yeah. and you don't know what's Someone, happening yeah that means you're not involved enough and business owners who want to uh extract themselves from from the day-to-day -day, uh i think that's going to be problematic and that's really the big issue i think with something like that happening secondly if you did see it was happening you would have caught it earlier addressed it with the director who's not, you know, not aligned with what your vision and passion and, and, and focus are and try to figure out how do we get realigned with each other? Because they may have an, a reason for doing it. That may be a good reason, or they just may not be in, in line with what you're doing. So that those touch points are very important on a daily basis. You know, I always talk about in our, our agency and it's much like y'all's, you're all kind of essentially in one big space together. And that if you're setting so much stuff up on calendars and having, you know, formalized meetings, but you're not having conversational right. touch points, right. you're going to lose it. Yeah. You're going to lose all of the connectivity of that agency and that passion and that togetherness. You're going to lose it immediately by putting all of these kind of firewalls in between communication channels. Yeah, so you're all in the same room, but not communicating. Right. It's, I, I, have you ever sat at a computer and you get a meeting invite? just out of the blue from somebody who's sitting right across from you, yeah. but they don't even say anything about yeah. it. Yeah. How bizarre is that? Yeah. It's weird. Right. Yeah. So yes. And as they grow, you functionally, uh, you know, you don't have all the time in the day to go around to everybody's desk, but you, you should aspire to that. You should aspire to yeah. have connectivity from the, you know, your vice president all the way down to the, the Keurig girl who's replacing all the k-cups and stuff you know the keurig girl y'all don't have a, a keurig girl y'all have one wow, no. that's interesting yeah we have five <laughs> <laughs> she well, works in the, she works right next to all the attorneys all the attorneys <laughs> hey the so stack of i want to take i want to take us back because because <laughs> lots of coffee needed. i, I want to talk about uh we're already at 30 minutes and i don't we don't know how how long this podcast is going to be we, we plan on it being 30 minutes but if it's good it's, it's good six and, that's, hours. and that's great but the one thing i want to go back to about you know because we're, we're talking about pay mm. This is a great message for uh, for anybody out there who is kind of like on the fence at a company and they they can't decide, you know, am I all in? Because I'm we've all had that feeling too. Like not every company is no company is going to be like perfect and amazing and say like this is absolutely the perfect company. I know I want to work here, um, but if you're kind of on the fence, like, do I really want to dive in and give all three H's mm -hmm. to? to the to the company if i want to really you know give them all my potential new business contacts do i want to yeah. pour my heart into this job yeah. do i really want to get involved it's contracts to those people <laughs> to those people to those people i would say if you're a corp and i'm really making myself vulnerable since we literally have our core people in in this office and are going to listen to this yeah. if you're a core person at your company you can demand a lot of money oh for sure I mean, you can really demand a lot of money within within, but that's where you just have to be. There has to be reasonable. Well, I mean, you know. yeah, I mean, depend like a company like our size now to back off this, so that yep. nobody comes in and asks for a bunch of money after this. We don't have any this money, thing, so. <laughs> but like don't we, we don't have any money, guys. But no, I mean, that, yeah, obviously we're you know we're at a certain size and things like that. But if so, the bigger the company, the bigger the compensation. But in reality, like you've got that's the most leverage you have. I mean, mm -hmm. when I interview when I interview interns or entry level people who come in and then we do the negotiation, mm -hmm. I say, hey, listen, I want to negotiate with you. I want to talk about this. Yep. But just so you know, you don't have any leverage. 
Yep. Like, no, I'm not being rude. It's the reality. It's the truth. Like, you, you, you've never worked anywhere. Right. So I don't need you at yeah. all. Don't, yeah. And I like you. Yes. I want to like <laughs> you. And I think right now it looks like a good fit. But when you start off and they come in and say, well, here's what industry standard is. And you're saying, I, I, we're in Houston, Texas, and you're showing what <laughs> NYC pay scale is. It, when people show me that stuff, I'm guy. like, look, I'm going to pay you what I'm going to pay you. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, 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 that's what's going to happen here. But the, op- the flexibility and the open-mindedness there is, is that within six months, within a year, Exactly. If you start proving yourself worthwhile in whatever area, let's talk about this again because the the, the pay jump's going to be above the standard 4%. It's going to be Hell yeah. your value is up to you. And that's the thing is that you you sit there and you talk about the original days of, of our agency when we started and there was kind of this upstart uh, startup feel to it and that everybody had this energy uh, is the sky's the limit. Yeah. So even as we sit, you know, be bopping around 30 people, the sky is the limit, guys. Oh, yeah. And we're only as good as what we all do this to get together. But the thing is, as business owners, we have to remind ourselves, I can't just squeeze the orange and get the juice and no. then not pay. Right. Absolutely. For the orange juice. Right. So the thing is, is we have to constantly remind ourselves if this person is valuable, whether they're in a management level or not, they need to be emotionally and financially compensated to sh- reflect the growth of the, the yeah. success of the agency. So that's where you get into profit sharing and stuff like yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that's why you do all that stuff too. Not the incentive stuff is, is awesome, obviously, but the more you share, the more you open up your books and show people, Hey, we made $10,000 last month. So that's great. But that's limited. Like there's yeah. only, that's not, that's the money. There it is right there. That's what we made this month. So like you, I, you where, where do you think these raises are coming from? Yeah, exactly. And well, and I, I do want to clarify when I say that we have a core group of people, it's only the partners are the core. <laughs> Good. So, okay. yeah, just, no, no. I'm just talking about Jeff and I, but we're the core there. Everyone else is. Everybody's ancillary. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You can just, I don't even know their names. <laughs> So anyway, uh, if y'all want to go grab lunch in my Bentley after this, we can. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah. <laughs> so. um, I think that's good. Yeah. I think that was good. How, what are we, uh, about 35 we're, we're minutes? Right about 30. Yeah, I think that was good. Tom, this was great. I liked it. Yeah? I, I like this a lot. No, I, no. I came in here very nervous because this, this. What? The camera died and we don't know what, at one point it died. <laughs> it went from 20% to the, that one, but we're still recording on audio. Oh, really? The camera died and we don't know when. Did we charge the battery, guys? Uh, Gabe, I thought you were a core member. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would like to go d- directly to the nephew on this one. <laughs> uh, yeah, just blame the intern. That's the easy thing to do. Yeah. No, your your camera's working great. You yeah. did your job. Um, <laughs> no, this was this I was like awesome. I I I uh, I invite everybody to ask questions. I think there's a place where you can message um, message the podcast, leave us voicemails, send us. Text. I mean, there's about a one billion ways to connect with us, but I'd love to get questions um, after the show t- for Thomas or for us about this. Of, it's a fascinating subject. I think that you could easily make this a, a two parter. I yeah. would. I would like them though to comment on the food that I have posted on. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Why are you here? What are you plugging today? <laughs> sh- sh- shout out to uh, Thomas Watt seven seventy. On Instagram. Why do you know the actual username, Jeffrey? Uh, Thomas Watt 770. <laughs> it's like right above his lower back. Thomas does have some beautiful food posted on Instagram. He got, like a lot of people had, did, did like got really into posting something yeah. for like a short period right. of time. And then I realized it's so expensive to cook every <laughs> night that I stopped cooking about three years ago and I haven't posted anything since. So yeah, it, it, Beautiful photography. The, the, the best post of all of them is the one that shows the little lamp. The little the, light. Uh, yeah, my lighting little system. Tiny, the, the, this is how I, my pull, production value. Pull back the curtain. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Hey, you know, you, you have to pull back the curtain. It's a... <laughs> It's anyway, not this sorry. big fancy setup, guys. No, guys, I know <laughs> by looking at it, you think this is amazing. Uh, but let me just show you what I'm working oh, with here. Oh, that reminds me. So Jeff's Jeff's brother, Griffin, uh, has been, been cooking a lot and and, sh- and shooting Jeff. I'm going to expose you here. Yeah. You know, and sending pictures oh. of food to Jeff, yeah. kind of bragging. And, 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 Har- and Harper's Harper, kind of well, bragging uh, about what he's been cooking, what he's been cooking. Jeff has been going and finding stock photos of food. <laughs> And it, sending them back. Oh, yeah? You look throw, what I did. You throw some filters and stuff on there to yeah. make it look just crappy enough, <laughs> and you send it over. Hey, man. Well, the, but the, look what the I made. jig is up now. He knows. <laughs> well, Damn. you're assuming that he's going to listen to this crap. He, he, well, he will. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, did we, uh, did we miss any facts today, or did you pay attention at all? Okay, that's Sarah. It was so Sarah engaging. Is, you did Sarah, not Sarah is a core member. <laughs> yeah, the, the, 
That yeah. puts you on the Fact fringes of the court. What's the outside of the court? You have the court, and then you have the mantle. Uh, so, the crust. Uh, she, right? she, yeah, she moved to the crust. <laughs> <laughs> Loam. Oh, you're getting that's too much. Is that something? That's too much. I don't think that's anything. No. no. Fact check. Can you fact check loam? Yeah, yeah it's part of the outside mm, of the earth. I think that's a growth on your foot. Okay. It's a loam? Yeah. <laughs> I don't I gotta know. lance that loam off. Um Okay. Well, I think I'm gonna conclude this uh podcast uh, with thanks to our first ever guest and friend, Thomas Watts. I loved it. For joining this us. is awesome. Shout out I Thomas Watts seven seventy. It says seven seventy. <laughs> Loam soil. I'm onto something. That's part of the crust. Yeah, though. but you're like getting that's. It's like, we're talking about parts of the earth. You're talking smart. about like just getting like too granular. Yeah. Okay. You're talking about the dusting on a donut. We're yeah. talking about the it's dough. Good. Okay. <laughs> this podcast is over. You know what that means? <laughs> <is. laughs> Shut it down. What's your uh, What's your dog's name? Jake. Yeah. See, there we go. Look at I'm a good interviewer. I already got her at ease. <laughs> I like that. Uh, what yeah. kind of What kind of What kind of dog is he? I think he's adorable. By the way. He's. Part German Shepherd, part Boxer, we think. Yeah, yeah. He he seems he's a, he's a lovable pup. So the other day you showed me a picture, and he was wearing a raincoat. Was that by choice? He he put it on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's gonna get real tough right now, Sharon. Okay, no. <laughs> it's it's animal cruelty. <laughs> why was he uh? Why was he wearing a raincoat? It was raining outside. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow, that was well done. God, you're right. She is venomous. She's mean. Did you hear that? Like, she almost, I almost heard a comma an idiot. Yeah, after yeah. It was raining outside, comma, idiot. God, <laughs> she's hardcore. Moron. What do you see the advantages of a dog raincoat? <laughs> um, so they don't get all wet. Jake likes to run through the bushes. So when he comes back, it's like he just got through a shower. Let, let me put this hypothesis out there. <clears throat> the benefit of the dog wearing the raincoat is that it empowers you <laughs> to make the dog do whatever you want the dog to do, where he has no voice a in power the situation. Play. It's, it's a, power a power play. play. It sounds like true. Yeah. yeah. He enjoys it. Ooh, and he, that, sounded, <laughs> that sounded like now, some, some of the control issues. If you were saying that the dog was maybe wearing like a little sheriff star in a holster, I, would, I could see him enjoying that. That does sound cute. But the raincoat? I don't, I don't no. know. Does it have a, a hole for the tail or a, does it cover the tail? <laughs> it's, uh, it just goes on top of the body. He's a boxer. He doesn't have a tail. He's not a boxer. He's she a said dog. he's a boxer. Yeah, that's a, that's a miscalculation. Oh, he's just I've a German shepherd with, with boxing gloves. Oh, no, he, <laughs> <laughs> he's a boxing German <laughs> shepherd. Yeah. Uh, does he, um, does he have rain boots? No, I want to get him rain boots. Uh, he could, he was going to fall down. Wait, but they have little grippies at the bottom. Yeah, so do his paws. <laughs> you know, you ever watch the show 48 Hours Mystery? No. And it's like, <laughs> Sharon you mean had a dog. You mean 48 but hours? there was more than coffee brewing at her apartment that day. <laughs> Don't you mean 48 hours? 48 Hours Mystery. Not 48 Hours is Eddie Murphy. No, there's a show called 48 Hours. But it's called 48 Hours Mystery. Two days. I don't think anyone calls it that. <laughs> I'm sorry, fact checker. That's like calling... That's like, that's like calling, oh, is it a different show? Well, I don't know what you're referring to. It doesn't have Eddie Murphy. Is it like, is it like Law and Order SVU? It's on the ID network that only losers like me watch. You watch the ID network? (laughs) Yeah, I pay for that subscription. You pay for the ID network? I'm pretty sure they give that away. Just the ID. I'm under contract with. (laughs) Oh, that's right. That's why he's here to plug. I have a contract with ID. That's why he's here to plug. My point is, is that. I feel like this is a beginning of like, she seemed normal until we found out she had 50 raincoats <laughs> just for her dog. All different colors. All different colors. <laughs> and before she was able to attain the booties, she was caught by the police, you know. So anyway. Thanks, Sharon. Thank you. That was anticlimactic. She just poured her heart out. I know, but and it, you're like, I like go I, away. I know. I like these. <laughs> I like these tight little. I like these tight little segments. Mm. You know, keep it. Oh, keep, that's you know? right. Yeah, you're. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah, these tight little segments. Okay. No, 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 no. I was saying you're you're more producer minded. <laughs> I am. Yeah, I am. You've got the. Vision. I want to. I want to keep the. Uh, I want to keep it. Uh, I want to keep it moving. You're a core member of this production. <laughs> and you will be compensated. Uh, should we get Linda Ho in for the uh, ballistic statistics? Yeah. So what we're going to do, thanks, Sharon. Let go, Hello, let, go yeah. let go, let go, let go. There there is the photo op. Okay. <laughs> okay. So this is a new segment. Now it's only our second episode, so I mean, everything's pretty new. But this is a new segment called... 
Ballistic Statistics with Linda Ho. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, she, she brought her own theme music. Uh, there's passion. There she offered. Inside. I don't know if that was passion. Yeah, that was, was passion. It was humor. Core was, that was a different age. Core member. Hello. Um, okay, Linda's going to take us through how 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 our our podcast slash the five not podcast but the five plus eight show performed uh, after its its maiden voyage, its first episode. All right, guys, I made this presentation here. Thank you. And this is the. Um, it's a good photo. Mm-hmm. This is a graph of all the people that have seen it. Whoa. How many? You know, so what you, right. Also, some of this is going to be just audio, so you're going to have to read some of that, Linda. Oh, okay. Well, just the things I wanted to point out. 50% of our audience dropped off or stopped watching after a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's I, cool. had high, I had high hopes for this segment, and it's it's already exceeded. exceeded. I'm enjoying this immensely. <laughs> Total time was 30 minutes, so after a minute, they're like, nah, peace. <laughs> So you're, cool. yeah, the viewership line on there looks almost like a, 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 a dead person's heartbeat. Yeah, it's funny that you say that because these little bounces here uh-huh. indicate that people actually jumped around because they're like, oh, maybe there's more interesting things. Maybe it gets mm. better. <laughs> no. It's okay. It'll get better, I know for sure. I, b- um, I believe so. <laughs> and then the average person stayed on for about six minutes and 43 seconds. Oh, that's, cool. that's longer than I would have expected. Yeah. Seven minutes? Yeah, that's really good, right? Six minutes and 43 seconds. Don't, don't round up. No. Like, yeah, okay, yeah. I mean, it's still less than 30%. <laughs> oh, they stayed on for almost about 15 minutes, you're saying. <laughs> 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 Just rounds it up. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. I'm, nice. I'm, 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 I think it's an important, an important um, characteristic of, a, of an entrepreneur to be optimistic. <laughs> So I always try to find ways to, yes. to look on the bright side. Yes. Okay. And then um, for those that don't know, we are also posting these on anchor.fm. Thank you. Is that right? Is that Russian? Is it a Russian website? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't know that FM was an available thing, but you could find this on anchor.fm. And there's only five people that have listened to the first episode from there, which is only, why would you say only? I, you I watched just, it on YouTube. Yeah. And I saw that y'all had like 70 views or something really? on YouTube. Yes. Hey, Linda, where were those statistics? Well, you know, mm. those are super obvious. I like obvious. this. I like where this is going. <laughs> you could just go onto the website and find that. That's super obvious. Mm. These are the background um, stats. Metrics. Stats. Deep, deep, deep yeah. dive Analytics. metrics. I hacked the system for this one. Or right. just logged into something. Yeah, I yeah. logged in. But, okay. Equally. It. it should be noted that Jeff is just, just panting, laughing <laughs> in the background. Ballistic I think Jeff's just statistics. happy not to be sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. I think that's kind of cool. She ended with this. Yeah, no, she, well, now she has her own consistency. Her, her own, yeah, her own, her own music. Right. Um, okay, I think. I mean, I mean, unless we can have everybody in the in the company come on and, and say something. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Thomas. You. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, this is fun. Let's do it again. Okay. Okay. Uh,